Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. So now let's take a closer look at what makes TCP a reliable connection-oriented protocol and see how it makes that virtual circuit and how it uses sequencing acknowledgments and flow control. The virtual circuit is created with a three-way handshake, and that's important to remember, it's a three-way handshake, where the source computer sends a synchronization or a SYN segment to the destination computer. This is also called a connection agreement, basically where the source computer is saying, hey, this is how I'd like to transfer the data. Then the destination sends back an acknowledgement and another synchronization segment. This says, okay, I got your synchronization segment. Here's the final terms of how we're going to communicate. So it sends it back to the source machine, and then the source machine finally sends back an acknowledgement to the destination mach machine saying, okay, I got your synchronization and acknowledgement. We're ready to go, and the virtual circuit has been established. Now let's take a closer look at windowing, which is one of our types of flow control for TCP. Windowing specifies the number of bytes beyond the sequence number in the acknowledgement field that the receiver is currently willing to receive. And this is easiest to understand when we use the example of segments instead of bytes, but no, in, in the real world, uh, windowing is actually used, uh, the number is bytes and not number of segments. So for example, if we have a window size of one, this says that the sender can only send one segment but it, and then it has to wait for an acknowledgement before it can send another segment. So in this example, the sender sends segment number one. The destination, the receiver, receives it, sends an acknowledgement back. Now, since the sender has gotten the acknowledgement, it can send segment number two. The receiver receives number two and sends an acknowledgement back. Now, it's very important to notice the numbers here because the numbers are important. The acknowledgement number is the number of what it's expecting next. So it's not saying, okay, I received segment one, so I'm going to send back act one. It's saying, okay, I want act two now. Or down here, you can see it received number two, so I want number three next. Let's take a look at another example where the window size is three. In this case, the sender has the ability to send one, send two, and send three segments before it gets an acknowledgement back. So it, it's not worried yet. It's sending one, okay, I'm okay, sends two, sends three. The receiver receives them all and then sends back an act number four because that's what it wants next is number four. But the sender has to wait until it gets that acknowledgement before it can send the fourth segment because the window size is set to three. And you can see how the, the lower the window size, the more overhead you're going to have because the more acknowledgments are going to be sent back from the receiver to the sender. Now let's see what happens when a segment isn't received. So we've got our sender and our receiver here. The window size is 3. The sender is going to send 1, 2, and number 3 segments. The receiver received them all, so it's going to send an acknowledgment back of number 4 saying, hey, I want number 4. So the sender is going to send 4, 5, and 6 because the window size is 3. You can send the next 3 in line. But let's say segment number 5, there's an interruption there. Something happens. It is not received. So what the receiver is going to do is send back an acknowledgment number 5. And that's basically saying, hey, I got number 4. The one I want next is number 5. So sends that back to the sender. The sender sends number 5 to the receiver, and then the receiver sends back an acknowledgment saying, okay, next I want number 7 because I've already got number 6 here. See, I already received that. So the important thing to remember is the window size is how many, well, segments or in the real world, bytes that the sender can send without getting an acknowledgment back, and the acknowledgment number is what the receiver wants to get next. Now let's take a closer look at an actual TCP segment. First we have the source port. 
and this is the port that TCP chooses to send from. And this is going to be 1024 or above. Because remember, 1 through 1023 are reserved. And the source port is important because when the, so when we send a segment to our destination and the destination responds, when it responds, its destination is going to be whatever your source port was. So this is how we can have multiple connections going on at once because, you know, there's a lot of ports, you know, up to 65,000. So we can have about that many connections going on here because I may have a TCP virtual circuit with many different computers at the same time transferring data back and forth. Well, if we didn't send from a different source port for each one, then the data would get mixed up. And the destination port is the one we're sending to. So in our example, we're making a web request on HTTP, so most likely the destination port there would be port 80. The sequence number. This is what's used to reassemble the segments at the destination end. Because remember, with IP, the packets might not get there in the same order as they should. So with TCP, the destination can use these sequence numbers to reassemble them in the proper order. Acknowledgement number. This is what the destination host wants to get next. So we just saw that in our windowing example. Header length. This specifies how large the header is. And then reserved. This is really nothing. Uh, it's always set to zero. Flags. This is used to set up and terminate an actual session. Window size. This is what we just talked about with windowing, and this is actually specified in octets, which is also a byte. TCP checksum. This is a, another cyclic redundancy check, and this is on everything. So it's on the header and the data to make sure that there was no corruption in the transmission process. This is also very important because it's what makes TCP reliable. Urgent pointer. Uh, if this is used, it specifies where uh, the non-urgent bits start. This is where various options can be set, and this is the data that's actually encapsulated in our segment.